Hi, welcome to Math Movies with Ms. Feuerbeck and Ms. Valuti. Today we will be multiplying whole numbers using powers of 10. Hopefully you've already watched the powers of 10 math movie, and this is going to be a little bit of a quick review, but you're going to need to have watched that one to understand this even more in depth. What you should have learned from that previous video is that our place value system is all about the number 10. You will recall that each time you move the decimal place one place to the right, it's the same thing as multiplying by 10. So you'll notice here, if we think about it in terms of money, if we're starting with 10 cents and we move that decimal place one spot to the right, what we're seeing is if you take a dime and you multiply it 10 times, or you take 10 dimes, you're going to have one dollar. Now, if we move that decimal place one spot to the right, we're up to 10 dollars. So what that's saying is if you took one dollar, you multiply that 10 times, now you have 10 dollars. Same thing goes if you have 10 dollars, you move that decimal place to the right. What's really happening here is we're doing ten dollars times ten. Now we have a hundred. And this goes on and on in both directions. We're going to use that strategy to help us do some multiplication using the powers of ten today. The information in the box is important because what it's saying is that if you're multiplying by the number ten, it's the same thing as moving the decimal place to the right one time and sometimes we call that tacking on a zero. So you've probably learned that trick where you know that if I take the number 8 and I change it to 80, well, what's really going on here? Well, what we know is that we are multiplying times 10. Now, what you may not have paid attention to that much in the past is the decimal point. The decimal place in 8 comes right after the 8, right? Think about if it was like $8, you'd have those zeros here. And what's going on here is when we multiply by 10, the decimal place has now moved over one spot to the right. And that's what we're talking about when we think about how tacking on a zero is exactly the same thing as multiplying by 10. Similarly, if you take 25 and we change it to 250, well, what's going on here? Let's take a look at where the decimal place was here. And the decimal place has now moved over one spot to the right. What's going on here is that we are multiplying times 10 again. So you can see the pattern holds true in any case. It's not just tacking on a zero, it's also multiplying times 10 and moving the decimal spot to the right once. Alright, so let's take a few examples just to practice with that and notice patterns. So let's say we started with 5 and we multiply 5 times 10. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the original 5. I'm going to think about where my decimal place is. And if I'm thinking about multiplying times 10, that's one time that I move my decimal place to the right. And that means that I have to put a 0 there because my decimal is now to the right of that, and the zero serves as a placeholder to show that we're talking about the whole number 50. So that means 5 times 10 is 50. I know that's sort of a long way to get an answer that you already know, but this is an important skill that's going to help you as you get into more complicated math, especially with some more uh, decimal numbers in a little while. Same thing goes with 5 times 100. We're going to start with 5, what we're doing with 100 is if we break it down, 100 is the same thing as 10 times 10. So that means for each group of 10, we're going to move that decimal spot to the right each time once. So one time to the right for this 10, one time to the right for this 10. Now, if I don't put any placeholders there, it just looks like a 5 with some strange arrows. So I need to plug in my zeros to indicate that I'm talking about the number 500, and these zeros serve to hold that spot. Same thing goes for 1,000. When we think about 1,000, that's the same thing as 10 times 10 times 10. So I'm going to put that 5 down, and you might have learned in the past, oh, let's tack on three zeros, one for each of those zeros in 1,000. That's absolutely a good shortcut, but let's talk about why it works. 
Each time we are moving that decimal spot over to the right from that original number 5, we're multiplying by 10. So I took care of one 10. Over to the right again, that's my second 10. Decimal place ends up here, and now we have our third 10. So each of those zeros represents times 10. Okay, so let's get into some numbers that are not as easy as 5. Let's look at something like 56 times 100. And this time we don't have the patterns to help guide us, so we need to practice the strategy. So similar as I did, similarly as I did before, I'm going to start with that 56 and put that here on my answer line. And what needs to happen is I need to notice that 100 is made up of 10 times 10, or two groups of 10. So for each of those 10s, I'm going to move my decimal spot over to the right, and I'm going to put my zeros in. So my final answer for that one is 5,600. All right, down below, we're starting with 459. So once again, I'm going to put 459. Now, in this case, we're multiplying by 10,000. 10,000 is the same thing as four groups of 10. 10 times 4. Or sorry, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Um, not the same as 10 times 4. So we're going to take each of these four groups of 10, and for each of them, I'm going to either think about it as tacking on a zero, slash moving my decimal place one spot to the right, which means I'm multiplying by 10 four times. One time, two times, three times, four times. Let's look at how the decimal spot moved. From 459, we moved over times 10 to 4,590. We move over again. We move over a third time, and we move over a fourth time. And I'm going to put in my commas here to make my answer a little more legible. And now we can see that our final answer is 4,590,000. All right, so there are going to be times when you're using the powers of 10 to help you, and the numbers get a little more complicated. It's not just as simple as... 56 times 100 or 5 times 10. So let's look at a couple of examples like that. Sometimes we're not going to be looking at 10, but a power of, or a multiple of 10. So in this case, I'm looking at 40 times 12. To solve that, I can think about 40 as the same thing as 4 times 10, and I know that I'm working with a power of 10 here. 12 times 4 times 10. So what I'm actually going to do to start is I'm going to be thinking about, hmm, I'd like to start by multiplying these two numbers, 12 times 4. That's a familiar math fact for me. So I know that's 48. Now I need to use my decimal rule with powers of 10. I'm going to move that decimal spot over to the right one time and tack on my 0 to represent that I'm multiplying by 10, 480. All right, let's try that again here. Now, in this case, I'm starting with 35 times 200. Now, I know that 200 is the same thing as 2 times 100. 35 times 2 times 100. So I'm going to start with 35 times 2 because that's something that I know how to do. And I know that 35 times 2 will bring me to 70. Now I have to multiply times 100. I can think of that as 10 times 10. So I'm going to move over to the right 2 times for each 10. And that brings me to a total, or a product, of 7,000. Lastly, we have 9,000 times 60. So in this case, I'm looking at powers of 10 in both of my factors. So I've got uh, 9,000 and I have 60. I'm going to take a look at how 9,000 is made up of 9 times 1,000 and 60 is 6 times 10. So what I'm actually going to do in this case is I'm going to start with my two whole numbers, 9 times 6, which is a number I'm familiar with. I know that's going to be 54. And then I have to think about how I have that number times 10. So I'm going to move my decimal spot over to the right once for that 10. 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10. We're going to go over three more times, plug in those zeros to hold our places, and represent multiplying by 10 three times. So I've taken care of all of these zeros. 
I'm going to put in my comma, and we know that our final answer is 540,000. Each of those zeros represents multiplying by 10. So we've come to the end. What I want to remind you is that every time you are moving the decimal place to the right when you're using the powers of 10 or tacking on a zero, what's really happening is that you're multiplying by 10. So keep that in mind because as we get into decimals, you're going to want to use that rule to help you all the time.